Today is day three in our novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And in the book Purgatory, there is a story of the scapular that uh, we're going to look at today. It is especially on certain days that the Queen of Heaven exercises her mercy in Purgatory. These privileged days are first all Saturdays, then the different feast days of the Blessed Virgin, which thus become as festivals in Purgatory. We see in the revelations of the saints that on Saturday, the day specially consecrated to the Blessed Virgin, the sweet Mother of Mercy descends into the dungeons of Purgatory to visit and console her devoted servants. Then, according to the pious belief of the faithful, she delivers those souls who, having worn the Holy Scapular, enjoy this Sabbatine privilege and afterward gives relief and consolation to other souls who had been particularly devout to her. A witness to this was the Venerable Sister Paula of St. Teresa, a Dominican religious of the convent of St. Catherine in Naples. Being wrapped in ecstasy one Saturday and transported in spirit into purgatory, she was quite surprised to find it transformed into a paradise of delights, illuminated by a bright light instead of the darkness which at other times prevailed. While she was wondering what could be the cause of this change, she perceived the Queen of Heaven, surrounded by a multitude of angels, to whom she gave orders to liberate those souls who had honored her in a special manner and conduct them to heaven. If such takes place on an ordinary Saturday, we can scarcely doubt that the same occurs on feast days consecrated to the Mother of God. Among all her festivals, that of the glorious Assumption of Mary seems to be the chief day of deliverance. St. Peter Damien tells us that each year on the day of the Assumption, the Blessed Virgin delivers several thousands of souls. The following account of a miraculous vision illustrates this subject. It is a pious custom, he says, which exists among the people of Rome to visit the churches, carrying a candle in the hand during the night preceding the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. Now, it happened that a person of rank, being on her knees in the Basilica of the Araceli in the capital, saw before her prostrate in prayer another lady, her godmother, who had died several months previous. Surprised and not being able to believe her eyes, she wished, she wished to solve the mystery, and for this person, and for this purpose, placed herself near the door of the church. As soon as she saw the lady go out, she took her by the hand and drew her aside. Are you not, she said to her, my godmother, who held me at the baptismal font? Yes, replied the apparition immediately, it is I. And how comes it that I find you among the living, since you have been dead more than a year? Until this day I have been plunged in a dreadful fire on account of the many sins of vanity which I committed in my youth. But during this great solemnity, the Queen of Heaven descended into the midst of the purgatorial flames and delivered me, together with a large number of other souls, that we might enter heaven on the feast of her assumption. She exercises this great act of clemency each year, and on this occasion alone, the number of those whom she has delivered equals the population of Rome. Seeing that her goddaughter remained stupefied and seemed still to doubt the evidence of her sense, the apparition added, In proof of the truth of my words, know that you yourself will die a year hence on the Feast of the Assumption. If you outlive that period, believe that this was an illusion. St. Peter Damien concluded this recital by saying that the young lady passed the year in the exercise of good works in order to prepare herself to appear before God. The year following, on the vigil of the Assumption, she fell sick and died on the day of the feast itself as had been predicted. The Feast of the Assumption is then the great day of Mary's mercy toward the poor souls. She delights to introduce her children into the glory of heaven on the anniversary of the day on which she herself first entered its blessed portals. This pious belief, adds Father Louvet, is founded on a great number of particular revelations. It is for this reason that in Rome the Church of St. Mary in Montorio, which is the center of the Archcon Fraternity of Suffrages for the Dead, is dedicated under the title of the Assumption. Well, there we have a story of the uh, related to the holy those who wear the holy scapular, and also this great feast of the Assumption. Now, keeping in mind that the first day of this novena 
which was July 7th, then 40 days from, from that day is the Feast of the Assumption. So our Novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel is also the beginnings of our preparation for the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. We also see in this the, um, the campaign called Lead Freedom Ring, uh, 40 Days to Defeat the Devil, being sponsored by the U.S. Grace Force website, which I will encourage you to participate in. This is basically treating this time before the Feast of the Assumption as uh, like a time of Lent, to come to the aid of our country, of our cities, of, uh, of everything that we hold dear, um, the protection of our churches, protection of our faith. And so I would encourage you to log on to the U.S. Grace Force website and get started with the uh, Let Freedom Ring 40 Days to Defeat the Devil as well. Let us consider, if we knew the time was short, how differently would we act than we are acting now. Nevertheless, we don't know, but we still need to act. Let us turn to the liturgical novenas and triduums on this uh, novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And let's see, where are we here? Here we are. Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. From Ecclesiasticus, my memory is under everlasting generations. Let us pray. The Lord has blessed thee, O Mary, for from thee we have received the fruit of life. Thou alone, without an equal, hast pleased our Lord Jesus Christ. Despise not our prayers and our needs, and deliver us from all dangers, O Holy Mother of God. Let us call to mind our intentions for this novena, and let us also call to mind those souls in purgatory who are most in need of our prayers, those who um, perhaps neglected to wear the holy scapular, those who neglected to uh, live life as they could have, nevertheless, who are saved but are being purified in purgatory. Let us pray for those most needy souls in purgatory. And whatever other intentions you have for this novena, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary speaks, I walk in the way of justice in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may enrich them that love me and may fill their treasures. Let us sing the Ave Regina Celorum. Ave Regina Celorum. Ave Domina Angelorum, salve radix, salve porta, ex qua mundo lux est orta, gaude virgo gloriosa, super omnes speciosa, vale o valde decora, e pro nobis Christum ex ora. Hail, O Queen of Heaven enthroned, Hail by angels, mistress owned, root of Jesse, gate of morn, whence the world's true light was born. Glorious virgin, joy to thee, loveliest whom in heaven they see, fairest thou where all are fair, plead with Christ our sins to spare. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who was pleased to honor the order of Carmel with the singular title of thy most blessed mother, Mary ever virgin, Grant, we pray thee, that she whose memory we solemnly venerate today may favor us with her protection, so that we may be found worthy to share in eternal happiness, who livest and reignest forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me tomorrow for day four in our novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel.